Since the day the world was given Siri by Apple, streaming our microphone to a cloud server was expected as the privacy tax to use any AI voice assistant. As it always has been in tech, if the product is free, we are the product unless we build it. It's 2025, and today we will change that by vibe coding this. Jarvis. In a world with more people using commercial AI tools in their daily lives, explain briefly without verbosity to somebody interested in data privacy why they might want to consider developing their own AI tools. Okay, here's a concise explanation for someone concerned about data privacy regarding developing their own AI tools. Commercial AI relies on collecting and analyzing your data. This creates a risk of that data being used in ways you don't approve of. Building your own AI, even a simple one, keeps your data contained. You control what information it uses. Jarvis, specifically talk about the privacy concerns of using an AI voice assistant that relies on sending your audio input to a cloud server. Okay, let's focus on voice assistants sending audio to the cloud. The primary privacy concern is this, your voice data, everything you say, is transmitted to a remote server. That server stores your audio. Jarvis, which programming language would be best to learn for somebody interested in developing their own AI tools? For developing AI tools, Python is generally recommended. It has extensive libraries specifically for AI and machine learning, like TensorFlow and PyTorch. Vibe coding, aka the art of creating computer programs with chill vibey prompts, is the biggest hype in all of AI currently. AI through code editors or good old chatbot interfaces are no doubt tools that allow programmers to be far faster programmers. Coding with only vibes without a clue how programming actually works is like throwing your prompt into the cursor AI slot machine and hoping it spits out the perfect code for your app. When you have no clue how code works, the AI might follow your direction perfectly in your prompt while disregarding essential concerns an experienced software developer would address in making your desired program. That's exactly what happened to this developer on X who went viral after the app that he built 100% with AI code got hacked for having security flaws that would have been obvious to any freshman computer science student. Maybe you encounter some errors in your vibe coding session, paste them back into the chat GPT interface or whichever AI you are using, direct the AI as someone clueless of how software works on how to fix this software issue and the AI puts more and more focus on this one specific problem thanks to the chat context growing on this issue specifically. What if while debugging that issue makes us incorporate a library or algorithm of code into our software from an untrusted developer or with unsecure code that exposes critical data within our software? Well in that case if we don't know how our code works we may just have to nuke the servers running that AI business we spent months months asking AI to pretty please make work for us. With each new AI model release, they no doubt keep making huge progress on solving more and more complex programming issues. Yet still, in April of 2025, in an hour of coding, half the problems that I have to solve as a software engineer, I cannot get the AI to solve correctly. In this video today, I will attempt to vibe code a local AI voice assistant to my specs until the vibes get unhesh. You'll see exactly where AI fails when I'm building out my programming ideas, then as a software engineer that's been programming for over eight years, I will show you how I step outside of the bounds of relying on these AI models to solve programming problems and solve it like we did in the Stone Age five years ago. For the initial vibes, I want to create an entirely new Python voice input interface. Three years ago, OpenAI released the open source Whisper models back when they still aligned with their company name. The Whisper library, as it was released by OpenAI, transcribes an audio file and outputs the full spoken text. For the voice assistant we will be creating today, we're going to create an entirely new real-time voice transcription so that our program knows exactly when the wake word is spoken and transcribes the text prompt input as it is spoken so that as soon as we stop speaking for a preset amount of time, the transcribed text prompt input is immediately sent to our local language model. On GitHub, right after the Whisper models were released, this developer open-sourced a project built 
note on Whisper that creates a real-time streaming transcription of our speech from the microphone as it is spoken, displaying the live transcribed text as it is updated. This is undeniably a cool project as it is, but the voice assistant interface we will be building today is going to need quite a few additions. My plan is to see if I can get Gemini 2.5 Pro to vibe out a fully functioning voice input system for our voice assistant with wake word detection using this code specifically. Now this is where I already start using my programming knowledge to cheat at vibe coding compared to what a complete programming noob would be able to do. If I was of the generation that learned to code post chat GPT, I probably would have never been paying attention to GitHub three years ago to know that this code existed, which accomplished 95% of the hard work I'm about to make Gemini do to create the first of its kind real time whisper voice input system for a voice assistant. What that means is I could just go straight to Gemini and not give this open source code as context as if I didn't know it existed and then just ask Gemini to create the entire system based off of my instructions. In other words, it's going to require a ton of pulling the vibe code slot machine lever in hopes that eventually after hours of prompting an AI model for code that it spits out some working code. And still what code seemingly works, I'm not actually even going to know if it implemented this system as I instructed it to, to make the most optimal code that I wanted for my program. But because I did have knowledge of this GitHub project and the ability to analyze that the developer did indeed engineer a highly efficient whisper streaming mechanism in his code, I can start steering the model to understand that its task is to focus its limited reasoning intelligence on specifically implementing something to already existing code. Thanks to this code, within one prompt, Gemini successfully created exactly the functionality that I need for my voice assistant. Now I'm going to discuss a huge issue or advantage to the way that Gemini generates this code depending on your perspective. Gemini 2.5 Pro is the first model that I have seen that seemingly reasons as it codes by creating long drawn out code comments before writing the actual code. Just like reasoning before responding increases general reasoning intelligence on complex prompts, this reasoning as it codes allows Gemini to code much more complex software solutions that we ask for by reasoning as it codes like any good human coder would. After the code has been proven working, it's undeniably useless junk making our program look messier than it needs to be. So in other words, every time I use Gemini 2.5 Pro to create even a single code block, I expect to do a lot of cleaning up of that code. Again, this is a step that a complete software noob would overlook, then they end up with a 1500 line Python program that could have been written in 200 lines, which makes maintaining that code code exponentially harder than it needs to be. Now for us Mac users, we could run the Whisper models with PyTorch as is written in this code. But unlike PCs with NVIDIA GPUs that PyTorch was primarily developed for, Apple Silicon processors will more efficiently inference AI models with the MLX engine. MLX is an open source framework developed by Apple for making the best usage of the machine learning abilities in the M1 to M4 chips. Now that I have a fully functional streaming Whisper interface, I can go back to the vibe code slot machine and give this code as context requesting only the necessary changes be made to convert the program to inference whisper through MLX instead of PyTorch. Now for the sake of making this tutorial relevant for anyone on any operating system, I'll rename my test script with the PyTorch code as main.py, which will be the script that I continue developing the voice assistant for Windows and Linux. In a new program that I will name mac underscore main.py, I will start coding out the Apple Silicon op optimize local AI voice assistant. As is always the case with my YouTube videos, the written version of this video's tutorial and all of the source code for this program that I am building today is in the pro tutorial for this video on my Discord. In that pro tutorial, you will find the step-by-step -step written tutorial with all of the code blocks for each step and the complete source code for both of these programs being developed in this video. AI Austin Pro members unlock access to the pro channels on my Discord server where I share these written tutorials with the source code before I finish editing these YouTube video tutorials. To become an AI Austin Pro member, click the Buy Me a Coffee link in this video's description to join today. Thank you to all of the Pro members making it possible for me to keep making these videos. And if you can't afford to join the Pro membership, I make sure to make these videos with all of the necessary information so everyone can still follow along. The Pro membership is not in 
any way required to follow along this video or any of my video tutorials here on YouTube, but the Pro Discord channels are simply for people that prefer tutorials in a format that YouTube doesn't. Now that we have code working as our real-time Whisper voice input system in one Python script, we need to add the local language model generation functionality to this program. But before I go modifying any of the code in this program, I'm going to create a separate script named test.py in Mac underscore test.py to start the language model generation code and make sure that that's working before adding it into the bigger program. Like the Whisper models, Max with Apple Silicon are going to more efficiently inference local language models with MLX versus using the alternative, which would be Olama. I'll code out the language model response stream function with MLX in the Mac underscore test.py script on the left for Apple Silicon, and on the right, I will use Olama, which will be the optimal for Windows and Linux users. Since we have our our working voice input system code and now in a separate script we can run this and see that we have the code to prompt our local language model and stream the response we can simply prompt Gemini 2.5 Pro giving both scripts as context explain what the code is and tell Gemini to implement the generate response function into our main script so that it is called after a post wake word voice prompt is transcribed this is one of those uses for modern language models aka AI that when used looks amazing to someone who can't code or maybe even someone that can code using AI for the first time but for me feels stupid because I know all the limitations of using AI to implement such a simple functionality into my main script. No, 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 don't say that. That is because I have coded so many AI agents and voice assistants at this point that I know exactly how I wanted that function implemented into my main script, and if I didn't go full vibes, I could have ensured that it was implemented exactly how I desired without all these modifications to clean up Gemini's code. For experienced developers, we have a subjective preference of how we want our code written so that it's easy for us to read and modify in the future. And just throwing the code written by an AI in a world where each new model has a unique coding style into our bigger program is like having a bunch of developers on one team that put zero regard into how the main manager aka you wants the code to be written. Now I'm not going to sit here and argue that your ever updating AI assistants cannot generate working code for your feature requests, but the AI does not give a shit if the code being generated to be added into our greater program is written with ease of updating in the future in mind. After I've cleaned up my vibe generated code, I can save the main program and then run it. Now the program will transcribe my prompt after the wake word is spoken and stream the language model's response to that prompt in command line. Which leads us to our obviously needed next feature for our voice assistant, a voice. When it comes to local text-to-speech, the simple option that I will be showing in this video is to leverage your operating system's built-in text-to-speech engine. This is not only the simplest method to code, but more importantly, it will be the lowest latency TTS option for your voice voice assistant if you don't have a high RAM Mac or a custom PC with a large GPU. Again, as I always do when coding a new feature for my larger Python program in development, whether or not I am vibing with AI, I don't want to just start coding it into my working main script. So we'll use the test scripts to get our text-to-speech working before implementing it into our voice assistant. For Mac, we are going to leverage system message calls to our command line to use the built-in text-to-speech engine. On Linux, and Windows, we are going to use PyTTSX3 to call your local text-to-speech engines. In the comments of this code displayed here, you'll see how you can change the voices of your voice assistant if you prefer. Once I have a speak functions code working in the test script with the voice settings that I prefer, how is the vibes world? I can now implement that speak function into my main script. The idea of using AI to implement such a simple functionality into this growing main script once I've tested and confirmed that the speak function is working makes me want to rm-r my entire consciousness. So instead, I will simply copy in the imports from the test script, copy in the speak function, and then call that speak function on the responses as soon as they finish in the handle command function. With that implemented at this point, 
point, the program is a fully functioning voice assistant with real-time voice transcription. I can now save the program, make sure all of the Python dependencies are installed, and then run it to speak prompts to any local language model that my computer can handle after a wake word using all of the optimal libraries. This leads us into what else you can add to this program's code. Think of this code as it is as a voice interface to your AI models, but adding agentic abilities to the voice assistant is where the real power lies in this code. As you have seen in this tutorial, everything about developing a massive program is coding out one feature at a time in a test script, testing that the new feature works, and then implementing it into your greater program in development. If you want to add web search capabilities to your local AI voice assistant, check out this tutorial that I created where you can implement the search agent abilities from that video into this voice assistant. Any API that you want your local voice assistant to be able to function call is one feature update away. Whether or not you choose to go full vibes with every feature update is a choice that everyone can make in 2025. The choice just guarantees a very high risk of AI messing things up and if you haven't been taking the time to understand each piece of code that the AI model is creating, the program might become so large that the only way to fix the problems in your code is to start over from scratch.